This is Miss Nancy from the Lake City branch of the Seattle Public Library, bringing you yet another edition of Early Learning Together, where we hope that kids and their grown-ups will enjoy these videos. Today, we're going to think about space, specifically about the moon. The moon has enchanted people for years. People think it's romantic to walk out under the moon. You can see the moon reflected on the ocean. You can sometimes see a whole moon that's round like this, or you can see a half moon or a crescent moon that's just a little curve of a moon. It all depends on what the angle is for the sun to be shining on the moon, and that's how much you see. But the side of the moon that we see is always the same. So if parents want to show kids how to, you can demonstrate this, take your hands and hold your children's hand. Swirl around in a circle, swinging your kid out. You will be looking at your child the whole time. And as you rotate around, the child and you will always be looking at each other. And that's what it's like when we are on the earth looking at the moon. We always see the same side. Until the Apollo flights went around to the backside of the moon, no one had ever seen it. I don't know how well they could see things because it's really dark on the backside of the moon because the sun is shining on the front side. But now people have gone around to the backside of the moon, so we know that it's there. We're going to be looking at some rhymes today about the moon and going to the moon. We're going to see how to make our own representation of the surface of the moon and make our own craters. Because craters are the big holes that are made when meteors or meteorites strike a surface of the earth or a moon. So you can make your own. So you can see the effect the stone's landing has on what happens with the dirt that's underneath it. And you can see in pictures those same patterns that we'll see when we try to do it ourselves. And at the end, we're going to watch some clips of actual NASA video showing some parts of the Apollo 11 flight. Well, you know, when you think about the moon, you think about seeing it in the nighttime. It's a bright object in the sky. Often it looks white. Sometimes it, when it's the harvest moon time, it might look yellow or orange. It's up against the dark sky with the stars sprinkled across it. But sometimes you can see the moon even in the day, even when the sun is shining. It will be a little less bright, a little fainter, but you can still see it. And someone wrote a song about that. Today, we're going to recite the words to that song. I'll say the words and you say them after me. Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon. You're out too soon. Ready? Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon, you're out too soon. The sun is still in the sky. Can I say that? The sun is still in the sky. Go back to your bed and cover up your head. Want to try that part? Go back to your bed and cover up your head and wait till the day goes by. Want to try that last line? And wait till the day goes by. You probably noticed that some of those words rhymed with other words in the poem. And if parents want to know more about the words, the words are listed in the notes below. Well, let's try that with you repeating it after me one more time, all right? I'll just know that you know when to repeat the words. Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon. You're out too soon. Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon, you're out too soon. The sun is still in the sky. The sun is still in the sky. So go back to your bed and cover up your head. So go back to your bed and cover up your head. And wait till the day goes by. And wait till the day goes by. Let's try it one more time. I'll try to go slowly and we'll say all the words together. Say the ones you remember. And you can practice with your grown-ups later when they read the words in the notes. Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon, you're out to soon. The sun is still in the sky. So go back to your bed and cover up your head. And wait till the day goes by. 
glad we got to share that song poem about the moon. It's kind of fun to do poetry. When you look at the moon in the night sky, you might notice that there are circular shapes on the surface of the moon. Some people look at those shapes and think they see a picture of a man's face, the man in the moon. In Asia, people look at that and sometimes think they see a rabbit. But where do those shapes come from? Well, those shapes are craters. They're formed when big pieces of space rock, meteors and meteorites, hit the surface of the moon really fast and really hard. And when the rocks hit the moon, a lot of the material, the dirt that's under there, splashes out and leaves a hole because the stuff that was where the hole is is now outside the hole. Some of those craters are really big. The Apollo 11 spacecraft landed in a crater the size of a football field. But next up, we're going to look at how you can demonstrate how those craters are formed. Well, here we are. I have replicated a small part of the surface of the moon using some flour in a pot. Now I'm going to use some sprinkles to represent minerals that might be on the moon's surface. The next layer is cocoa, just the plain cocoa that you get at the store, like that. And I have a little strainer. You could use a big strainer. This one comes from um, a tea strainer, or you could use a sifter to make it nice and thin, nice and spread out all over the surface. So now we have our three layers. Now, I'm going to pretend that this rock is a giant meteorite, and it's going to come from far away really fast and go straight down onto the surface. Whoa! You can see here that there's a pattern where the flour from underneath spread out. That's called ejecta. Let's try another rock and see what happens. Whoa! That was a pretty big one too. And sometimes the rocks don't come straight in, they go sideways. So I'm going to try this rock, which is not much like a meteorite, but we're going to throw it sideways and see what that looks like. You can see here that more of the ejecta went out, and then you can just see where the hole was, but there wasn't a lot that went out there. So you can try this at home and demonstrate how craters are made. When the meteors hit the surface, they often break up into little pieces, so craters have lots of big rocks in them. But I took the rocks out so you could see the craters better. So there's a lot of uneven surface like there is on the moon, and they're kind of circular, depending on the shape of the rock. So I hope you might try this at home or just enjoy looking at the craters on the moon. When I was a girl, I loved to watch space flights on television. Everything stopped on TV to watch the liftoffs of the Mercury program with one astronaut in the space capsule, of the Gemini program with two astronauts in the space capsule, and finally, the Apollo project with three astronauts in the space capsule. Finally, Apollo 11 came, and that was the first flight where men went all the way to the moon and came back safely. There were a few other flights after that, but that's why I love this rhyme. It reminds me of those trips to the moon when I was a girl. Ready? You can practice with me. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. You can do it too. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. For the next part, put your hands like this and tap on your legs. If you want to take a trip, try that again. If you want to take a trip, and here's the next part, climb aboard my rocket ship. You can do that. Climb aboard my rocket ship. Good. Now we're going to count down from 10. Some people count down from 5, but I think this is more authentic. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and blast off! We'll do that again. Now when it gets to blast off, you can throw your hands in the air. You can jump out of your seat like you're trying to get into orbit. 
If there's a grown-up in the room with a small child, you can lift the kid into the air. This makes that the most fun part of the whole rhyme. So now we're going to do the whole rhyme together, all right? Please come along with me. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off! And if you want to review the words, grown-ups, the words are in the notes. Next, we're going to look at some real footage from NASA, the government agency that was responsible for space flight for most of our lifetimes. So there you will see the Apollo 11 spacecraft on the launching pad at Cape Canaveral, Florida. You'll see it take off and go off toward the moon. The first man on the moon was Neil Armstrong, and the second man on the moon was Buzz Aldrin. Another astronaut stayed in the command module, Michael Collins, his name is, and he circled the moon so that he could meet with them later so all three of them could come back to Earth. And you'll see the space capsule descending into the sea, and it doesn't come down really hard because there were parachutes that helped them come down more gently as they re-entered. So I hope you'll enjoy this video from NASA showing the exciting moments of Apollo 11. At 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. We have a liftoff, liftoff on Apollo 11. Shadow, four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, drift. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Rocket Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. <laughs> We're pretty busy for Armstrong is on the moon. Captain, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon. On this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. of people have been astronauts, including people of color and women. Countless other people have contributed and continue to contribute to space exploration. The books on the next slide are available to check out from the Seattle Public Library. I thank you all for stopping by for another edition of Early Learning Together. I hope you will return to the Seattle Public Library Kids YouTube channel again to see more videos made by my friends and me.